Okay, so in lesson 7.4, we're going to talk about similarity, specifically in right triangles. So we're going to find and use the relationships in similar right triangles. This lesson, it's a little tricky to set up the proportions, so I'm going to spend a little extra time explaining that. We're going to make a foldable, and we are going to go through plenty of examples together just so you feel comfortable working through problems where you're dealing with two similar right triangles. So the theorem it's a little wordy, but it says the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle into two triangles that are similar to the original triangle and to each other. So if I have a triangle and the altitude goes to the hypotenuse, which means a perpendicular that goes to the hypotenuse, it creates two smaller triangles within that triangle, ADC and CDB. And all three of these triangles are similar to each other. ABC, the biggest triangle, is similar to ACD, the smaller of the two smaller triangles, and then CBD, in that order specifically. So the first thing that's hard to do is to determine of each triangle, each triangle has a hypotenuse, and it seems like you're naming the same segments over and over, so that's what gets confusing. So in example one, I really just want to break down the similarity statement I can write relating all three triangles in that diagram. So to write these triangles out, I'm going to make this smaller triangle look like this. The right angle is right here. The right angle of the smaller triangle when I split them up is W. This is X. This is Y. The other triangle I can create is going to be bigger, the right angle is still going to be W, okay? But this vertex is going to be Y, this vertex is going to be Z. So when I write my similarity statement, I'm going to say triangle, and I'm just going to start with the um, right angle. I'm going to go from Y to X to Z for the original triangle. If I do that, this one smaller triangle I would name W, X, Y. And that's going to be similar to triangle, the red one, W, Y, Z. So W, Y, Z, I should do that in red just to show that's the triangle I'm describing. The original triangle, the largest of the three, is Y, X, Z. And it's understanding that each triangle has a different hypotenuse. The original triangle has an, a hypotenuse of XZ. The smallest one has a hypotenuse of XY. And then the middle triangle, middle size triangle, has a hypotenuse of YZ. So it's hard to split those up. So that's why I'm showing this as an example now to show you this and hopefully you get a little bit comfortable of understanding what the triangles are. But I think it really helps to redraw the triangles so you understand of each triangle the same letter might mean a different vertex in different triangles. So what I want you to try in number one for the guided practice is just if you can redraw the triangles and determine how they're similar, okay? So take a minute to try and do that. Pause the video. When you're ready to resume, I'll do my best to explain it. But we are going to cover this in person together. I will give you practice problems. I'll, help, I'll give you feedback on those problems, and you'll feel more comfortable uh, determining which triangles are similar. So redrawing these triangles, the smallest one and the middle one that are made up, the right angle is still S, and then I have P SPR, SQR. So it's being able to redraw them, understand which sides correspond, and then writing that similarity statement. That order does matter. And this later on is going to help us when we actually have to find measures in these similar right triangles. Before we do that, I'm going to kind of teach you a little bit of a shortcut, but I'm going to talk about something called the geometric mean. The arithmetic mean of two numbers is when you add those numbers together and divide it by two. The geometric mean is a proportion. Um, so with any two positive numbers, the geometric mean is if I write a proportion, one of the numbers over x equals x over the other number, which means the geometric mean is really a times b equals x 
squared. Okay, so the geometric mean is when you multiply two numbers and you take the square root of the product of multiplying those two numbers. So in example two, I'm going to show you how to find the geometric mean of 6 and 15. That means I write 6 over the geometric mean and the geometric mean over 15. So to solve that, that becomes x squared equals 6 times 15, which is 90. And this is the part that's a little annoying. But to solve this, I would take the square root of both sides of the equation. This means this is the square root of 90. And I'm going to give you a really quick crash course in simplifying a square root because this is a skill that's going to be used in Algebra 2. To simplify a square root, you look for factors of that square root, numbers you can divide that square root by, that are perfect squares. I know I can divide 90 by 9, and 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3, so this simplified is 3 times the square root of 10. Again, this is just the introduction to this. I'm going to go over more examples. I'm going to give you practice on those examples, and I will give you feedback on that practice. So understanding this on a surface level for right now is actually okay. Once we cover more examples and I give you more tasks and things to do, you're going to be able to understand this at a deeper level. So mainly, geometric mean, multiply two numbers, take the square root, that is the geometric mean. I like to show it as a proportion because we are dealing with proportions this entire chapter. So try the second guided practice, and then I want you to hold off on doing any other problems for now because this is only the first half of the lesson. This lesson takes a few days to cover because it is a little more complex to wrap your head around the proportions and all those other things. So just do guided practice number two and then move on to the next part of the lesson. Okay, so if you got the square root of 72, that's good. What I wanna show you right here is how I would simplify the square root of 72. And it's understanding what I mean when I say factors. Numbers that I can have whole numbers, I can divide 72 by and get a whole number. Perfect squares, when I say perfect squares, I mean numbers like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, dot, 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 so on. So if you really think about it, a perfect square that fits into 72 is 36, two times. The square root of 36 is 6. So really, my answer to this geometric mean, if I'm simplifying it, is 6 square root 2. Now, we're going to cover this more in the next chapter. Right now, on a quiz, if you got to the point where you could get square root of 72, that might be just the difference between you getting a 3 and a 4 on that quiz. Because finding the geometric mean is my main goal. Simplifying square roots is not my main goal yet. That's going to be next, our next chapter. So... Right now, you're probably good enough to do the first few um, practice problems, and just that's it. I'm going to show them, all right? So you're ready for the practice, and then um, next class, we'll finish the rest of these examples. That'll be next time, because I want to show with a foldable graphic organizer how to solve problems like this next class.